Hi everyone, my name is Felipe Soares and I am a PhD candidate at Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. I'm here to present my paper, Bolsonaro's Army, How Opinion Leaders Fight Against the News. This study explores the context of information flow on Twitter. This is important because users are central to news circulation on social media. Also, opinion leaders have a key role and they help to shape public discourse. Furthermore, alternative sources of information dispute visibility with the mainstream media on social media. In this study, I look at two events. On September 28, 2018, Veja, a Brazilian magazine, published a story based on a legal process in which Jair Bolsonaro's ex-wife accused him of committing several crimes. And on August 22, 2019, during the Amazon rainforest fires, when several political leaders from different countries criticized Bolsonaro. So I follow two research questions. The first one is about the most influential actors. And in this case, I look at visibility. That is the most retweeted users in these conversations. And the second one is about the content of the opinion leaders' messages. And in this case, I look at how they interact with the content from mainstream media. The theoretical background of this paper is the two-step flow of communication theory. In this model, opinion leaders were responsible to mediate the information flow from the mass media to other, usually less engaged, people. On social media, however, some authors also defend the idea of a one-step flow model, in which users could interact directly with their public while other authors also believe the two-step flow model is still useful to explain some interactions on social media. For this study, I'm looking at retweets, so I collected data from Twitter using Social Feed Manager. For September 28, I used keyword Bolsonaro, and for August 22, I used keyword Amazon in Portuguese, Amazonia. And for both dates, I used the day as a time frame. I then used a Python script to discover networks and social network analysis metrics to explore these networks. I then identified the top 100 in-degree users within each group and classified them into opinion leader roles. I finally used content analysis to analyze the top retweeted message of each of these opinion leaders. So very briefly, uh, these are the two networks, and to divide them into two groups, I use Larson's typology of fuzzy zones and coherent clusters. So we have a zone that comprises the blue groups in both networks, and include users with several different ideologies. In common, they share an anti-Bolsonaro sentiment, so I called it anti-Bolsonaro group. The green cluster, on the other hand, is very centered on Bolsonaro and his supporters, so I called it pro-Bolsonaro group. To answer my first research question, as you can see, pro-Bolsonaro users avoided sharing mainstream media and gave visibility to opinion leaders. In both conversations, politicians and political commentators were the users with the highest share of retweets in this group. Political commentators was used to categorize mostly digital native political influencers that were not journalists or politicians, although some of them actually work on hyperpartisan outlets as colonists. One interesting fact, on August 22, when pro-Bolsonaro users retweeted mainstream outlets, a small amount of that in blue, they retweeted two fact-checking outlets just to weaponize their information to attack celebrities that were using old images to criticize Bolsonaro and to engage in the Pray for Amazon hashtag. Anti-Bolsonaro group, on the other hand, gave visibility both to mainstream outlets and opinion leaders, although this tendency was weaker on August 22 due to the prominence of celebrities and others, which was the category used to classify users that emerged in the conversations simply because one of their messages went viral. I then looked at opinion leaders' messages in comparison to mainstream media information. I identified that opinion leaders tend to reinforce the mainstream media information or reframe it based on their political narrative. 
pro-Bolsonaro opinion leaders either attacked mainstream outlets or tried to minimize the issues on the news. In both cases, they attacked the outlets by accusing the outlets to be leftists and untrustworthy. On September 28, they commented on the stories to deny the accusations toward Bolsonaro, while on August 22, they tried to minimize the amplitude of the fires. Among anti-Bolsonaro users, opinion leaders shared the space with mainstream outlets. Most of the opinion leaders' messages were comments on the stories, in which they tried to expand the information and contextualize it on the Brazilian political context. To summarize, as it is expressed in the first model, pro-Bolsonaro users relied on opinion leaders to reframe the information by attacking mainstream outlets and minimizing the issues on the news. The opinion leaders became a new source of information among these users. And furthermore, uh, they created a counter-narrative by reframing information in an effort to translate the original information according to their political ideology. This is problematic as it might mislead users and affect the informational environment on social media. The anti-Bolsonaro, as it is expressed in the second model, relied on media outlets to share the stories and opinion leaders to interpret it and contextualize the news. If you have any comments or questions, I would love to hear it from you. Thank you.